Good morning. Last week I enjoyed watching the presidential inauguration. As I said last week, I enjoy watching every four years. Doesn't matter whether it's a Republican or a Democrat being sworn into office. Doesn't matter whether I voted for the candidate or not. Because as President Bush 41 said to Bill Clinton, you are now our president and your success is our success. I'll be cheering for you. It's my country. I want to see what's going on. And it was an interesting inauguration. And one of the things that was interesting was that Andrea Hall was invited to come forward and lead the Pledge of Allegiance. And it got me to thinking, I don't really know a lot of history about the Pledge of Allegiance. So I did some study. It turns out that the Pledge of Allegiance was written by Francis Bellamy back in 1892. He was a Baptist preacher. He was serving the church, Bethany Baptist Church, um, in Boston. But he was also working for a magazine, The Youth Companion. And he really felt our youth needed to get used to pledging their allegiance to the country. So he sat down and he wrote the pledge. But what he wrote was, I pledge allegiance to my flag and the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Kids across America started saying it on a very regular basis to a new flag that had been mailed to so many schools across our country. But it was in 1923 that they decided to add of the United States of America so that we pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. It was in 1942 that Congress um, officially adopted the pledge as protocol with the flag and it began being used more and more. But it wasn't until 1954 that President Eisenhower wanted to add the words under God because we were in the height of the Cold War with Russia and it was believed that this atheistic communist society, we wanted to define who we were. And so now we had, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That pledge is now heard every day in schools across America. Every state except four require that pledge to be said. Can you guess which four states those are? It is Vermont, Iowa, Wyoming, and Hawaii. The other 46 states will be having children say the pledge. It is said every day in Congress. It's an important part about affirming who we are as a people. Well, Andrea Hall came out to lead all of those and all of us everywhere in the Pledge of Allegiance. The interesting thing was she happened to be the first African-American female fire captain in Fulton County, Georgia. When she joined the fire department a number of years ago now, there were only 1% of women who were firefighters, and now she is a captain. But then she surprised us all. She came out to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, and when she started to lead us in the pledge, she also started to sign it, to do sign language. No one knew she was about to do that. We would find out later why she did it. It's because her father, her late father, had been deaf. She did it because she wanted to honor her father and all people who had hearing impairments and, and were deaf. Because she really believed that everybody deserves respect and this is liberty and justice for us all. Besides, she said, she was coming out to lead the pledge right after um, Lady Gaga had been singing and right before J-Lo was about to come out and sing, she said, what a tough act to be sandwiched between. She said, I decided to bring a little meat. And she did. To come out and lead us in the pledge and to sign it at the same time, reminding us all that we are one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for us all. You and I help to live the pledge each day when we decide to go out and love our neighbor. No exception. Make it a great day.